Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2016 movie, The Girl on the Train. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie starts and we see a girl named Rachel who is sitting in a train, and we learn that her ex-husband named Tom has married to another woman named Anna. We learn that Rachel just aimlessly rides a train into New York City every day after losing her job and her marriage. Rachel explains that she has been on this train for years and always sits in the same seat, three cars down, so she has the perfect view of the neighborhood. She says she is a new person now and thinks people can see that in her, as a man in a suit makes judgmental eye contact from a nearby seat. Rachel tells us that she likes to imagine about the lives of all the people she passes. She wonders if people who live by the train even notice it when it goes by. From the train, she fixates on the lives of her ex-husband Tom, his new wife Anna, and their neighbors Scott and Megan Hipwell. Megan worked for Tom and Anna as a nanny for their baby, Evie, but that day, when she goes to Tom's place to take care of the baby, she goes on to inform Anna that she is going to leave the job because she's been offered a better job. Anna tells her that that's uncool since she'll have to be alone the following day. Megan suggests she gets a job again and that a lot of mothers work. Anna complains that she has to go grocery shopping and whatnot and being a mother is a huge job, pointing out that Megan wouldn't know. Later, Anna has a flashback of Rachel stealing her baby from the house and wakes up upset. We then see Rachel looking at Scott and Megan, and it's revealed that Rachel would love to be like Megan because Megan happens to have everything she ever wanted. Megan and Scott love each other like crazy. That night, Rachel checks the Facebook profile for her ex-husband Tom and sees a new pic of the baby he had with Anna. Moments later, Rachel is drunk and leaving voicemails at 1am. She is stopped short by Kathy, a friend who has let Rachel stay with her for over a year following her divorce. Kathy then goes on to pour the rest of the alcohol down the sink and advises Rachel not to call Tom anymore. Rachel's phone reveals all of her recent activities have been outgoing messages to Tom. Rachel still has not been able to let go of her past. She always keeps calling Tom and wants to talk to him. Kathy goes on to tell her that she needs to stop drinking all the time and she cannot just keep calling Tom because he has moved on. He has a new wife and they now have a baby as well. We learn that Rachel used to drink a lot when she was still married to Tom. They tried having a baby but the doctor made it clear they cannot have a baby as long as his wife keeps drinking like crazy. They then tried to get proper treatment for Rachel multiple times but she did not stop drinking. Rachel then started drinking even more because she got depressed that she was not able to have a baby. She even starts smoking regularly. Her condition is now so bad that she often has blackouts as well, and during those blackouts, she has no idea where she is and whom she's talking to, so she ends up doing weird stuff during those blackouts. One day when she is on the train, she sees Megan making out with another man that is not Scott, and Rachel is shocked to see that, since Rachel thinks that Megan and Scott have a perfect marriage. She is really upset as she has now seen Megan cheating on Scott. She decides that she is not going to let Megan ruin her perfect marriage just like that. She is now drunk, it is nighttime, and she blacks out. She does not remember anything that happened the whole night. Rachel rushes into the park and sees someone down a tunnel. We hear her shout, whore, and then hear a thud, but don't see any activity. The next morning, Rachel wakes up at Kathy's, blacked out and covered in blood and bruises. She has no idea what happened. She goes into the bathroom to wash up, and Kathy knocks on the door, asking what went on the night before. When Rachel tries to make up an excuse, Kathy tells her that she can see the blood on the sheets and she isn't stupid. Kathy and Rachel talk and Rachel reveals that she got fired from her job a year ago. She says that she takes the train to New York City every day. Kathy chastises her for spending her alimony on train tickets to nowhere. Rachel is now worried as she has no idea what happened last night. She then makes her way to the train and as she sits there, she sees Tom's boss's wife and she remembers the day Tom's boss invited them to a party, but at the party, Rachel got drunk, went out of control and created a mess which made Tom's boss angry at him and it led to a huge fight between Tom and Rachel because Tom got fired that night. This led to the tensions raising between these two and Rachel now thinks that she should not have been a drunk. She would have had a good life if she were not an alcoholic. In a flashback, we see Megan with her therapist again, talking about the aggressive relationship her husband Scott and she have. Her therapist suggests it's a form of emotional abuse, but Megan says she likes it. That night, when Rachel comes home, a detective comes to her and she goes on to tell Rachel that Megan is missing, and the day she went missing, some people saw Rachel in that area and she was drunk. Rachel tells her that it was Friday night, she was on her way back from her office, she wanted to see her husband, so she went to his town, but when she was there, she changed her mind and just headed back home. The detective, however, tells Rachel that she was fired from her job one year ago, so where does she go on the train every day? And Rachel now starts getting confused. Rachel does not say anything, and the detective has now started suspecting her. 
The detective, however, has no proof against Rachel yet, so she allows Rachel to roam free for now. When she is about to leave, the detective tells Rachel that Tom's new wife Anna had seen Rachel in the area and wonders if Rachel killed Megan Hipwell. Obviously, Rachel denies this, but she isn't sure if she did or not. Rachel visits with the police and tells the detective named Riley the truth that she noticed Megan from the train and there was another man with her that morning. Officer Riley says that Rachel said she has been stalking Tom with her phone calls and points out that Rachel once kidnapped Anna's baby. Rachel explains she went to visit once, drunk, the door was open, and she went inside and saw the baby crying while Anna slept. Rachel picked up the baby and walked her outside after having some compulsion to do so, but had no intention of kidnapping her. Anna woke up and became hysterical after seeing Rachel outside with her baby. Rachel is insistent that they find the man on the balcony with Megan, but they tell her to leave the people involved alone. Rachel then goes on to decide that Scott should know what his wife has been up to. Rachel then goes to meet Scott, Megan's husband. She claims that she knows Megan from the gallery. She tells him that she saw Megan outside with another man and they were kissing. Scott wonders if it's her therapist, Kamal Abdik, and brings up pictures of him on Google Images. Rachel confirms that this is the same man she saw Megan kissing. In another flashback, we see Megan meeting with her therapist. She talks about how she likes to touch herself and demonstrates, but he chastises her for not really truly doing it. Megan continues to flirt with him and sucks his finger. He warns her he could lose his practice. Rachel now meets with Dr. Abdick and uses him as a therapist to see if he can help her remember what happened when she blacked out. She said usually when she blacks out, her husband would tell her what she had done the night before, so she knew what she had to apologize for. But they had been divorced and it was all her fault for drinking. She says this started after their attempts at in vitro fertilization failed and she felt guilty for not providing Tom with the child he wanted. Rachel then starts telling him how her marriage actually ended. She tells him about the incident at Tom's boss's party, and then she tells him that another night, also drunk, she takes a golf club and smashes a mirror in front of him. Rachel realizes her drinking ruined her marriage and led him to cheat on her. It is announced that Megan's body was found and her husband was brought in for questioning, but was released due to lack of evidence. Security cameras caught him in a sports bar during that time. Rachel rushes to his house as he is released from jail. After reporters swarm Scott, Rachel walks away, spotting Anna pushing her baby in a stroller. Now confident, Rachel pushes past Anna. That night, Tom tries to have sex with Anna, but she brushes him off, worried about why Rachel was in their neighborhood. He tells her Rachel didn't kill anyone, she's harmless. The next day, she tries to sign into Tom's computer using various passwords, first Anna, then Evie, then she tries Rachel, but it does not work. Anna then goes to see the police officer and tells her that she is not at all comfortable with Rachel coming to their town every other day. She adds that she is scared that Rachel is going to harm her family or her baby for that matter. She requests the officer to arrest Rachel, but the officer tells Anna that they cannot arrest her just like that. They have no proof against her. Anna then learns that Megan's dead body has been found, and it is also revealed that she was pregnant. She now starts thinking that Rachel must have killed her because she is always jealous of the people who have kids as her own marriage ended because she was not able to give her husband a child. Scott then gets to know that Rachel is not actually Megan's friend, so he comes to her place, breaks in, and attacks her. Rachel then goes to see the detective and tells her that Scott's behavior is really aggressive and it is very much possible that he is the one who killed Megan. The detective, however, tells Rachel that Scott is not the killer because a CCTV footage proves that Scott was in a bar when his wife was killed, so it's clear that he is not the killer here. We learn Megan had a baby at 17 years old where she lived in a shack with the father who happened to have been the best friend of her brother before he died. On a cold night, she got in the warm tub with her baby in her arms and fell asleep, waking up to find her baby drowned. Back in the present, on her way home, Rachel goes into a bar and sees the same man in a suit from a train. She asks why he is following her. He says he can ask the same thing. She asks if he remembers anything about the night of Megan's murder. He says he saw that she'd fallen and cut herself near the tunnel and tried to help her up. She told him to fuck off, so he fucked off. Rachel leaves walking by the tunnel. She now remembers seeing Anna and calling her a whore before getting knocked out somehow. She remembers seeing Tom there in a car with Anna and the man in the suit asking if she was okay and her drunkenly telling him to fuck off. Anna in the meantime finds a phone in Tom's drawer and she sees tons of texts from Tom telling her how much he misses her, similar to when he cheated on Rachel with Anna. It is also revealed that Megan was not actually having an affair with Abdick, he was just trying to comfort her by hugging her when Rachel saw them. Rachel is on the train when she sees Tom's boss's wife named Martha is also there. Rachel finally approaches her and tells her that she is really sorry about the mess she created at the party that night. Martha, however, tells Rachel that she simply got dizzy and went to sleep in their guest room until the party was over, so there is nothing to apologize for. 
Rachel, however, points out that Tom got fired because of Rachel's behavior. Martha tells her Tom got fired because he couldn't keep his dick in his pants and was having affairs with many girls at the office. He was fired due to harassment charges against him. It now becomes clear to Rachel that she did not do anything wrong. It was her husband who took advantage of her drunk state and did all the wrong things and then accused Rachel of doing that. In the meantime, Anna again gets her hands on that phone and she is shocked when she realizes that it is actually Megan's phone. A now sober Rachel remembers that on the day of Megan's disappearance, she caught Megan meeting Tom and he hit her when she tried to confront them. It is also revealed that in the meeting, Megan told Tom that she was pregnant, he told her to abort but she refuses to. Tom killed her as he wanted nothing to do with that baby. Rachel was hit by Tom which is why there was blood on her shirt when she woke up at Kathy's place that night. Rachel goes to Anna and warns her right away. When both women confront Tom, he becomes angry, tries to force Rachel to drink alcohol again, throws the drink at her face, and then knocks her unconscious. When Rachel awakens, she flees for the front door, but it is locked. Tom tries to strangle her as Anna watches from the top of the stairs, guarding Evie. Rachel doubles back through the kitchen and picks up a corkscrew. Outside, Tom grabs her, and as she turns, she stabs him in the neck with the corkscrew. Anna then appears and twists it deeper into Tom's neck, killing him and avenging Megan's death. They are then arrested and during their investigation, Rachel and Anna tell identical stories about killing Tom in self-defense after he admitted that he was Megan's killer. Anna admits that Rachel had been right about everything. In the last scene of the movie, we see her sitting on the opposite side of the train, indicating that she is ready to have a new life. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.